Hi, everyone. Um, let's talk about chapter seven, which is about utility and utility maximization. This is the only chapter we're going to talk about consumers. After this chapter, we're focused on uh, businesses and the production side of the economy. Um, utility in general means satisfaction or the pleasure that somebody can get from um, consuming something, buying something, eating something. So utility is nothing but uh, satisfaction. And in this chapter, we're going to see basically how uh, consumers and buyers can maximize this satisfaction from their consumption. Because if you remember from chapter one, we're all facing with the scarcity. So with limited resources, limited income, we have um, how basically buyers or consumers can basically pick a point on their budget line that can give them maximum satisfaction or maximum utility, okay? That's the goal of this chapter. When it comes to utility, we should talk about um, two important basically concepts. The first one is called uh, total utility and the other one is called marginal utility. Um, so total utility is total satisfaction from consumption, okay? And we use, TU when we want to talk about total utility. So TU stands for total utility. That's your total satisfaction. And then we have marginal utility or MU. Remember from chapter one that marginal means additional extra. In chapter one, we define marginal benefit and marginal cost, if you remember. So marginal utility is the extra satisfaction from using one more unit of output or your extra satisfaction from um, eating a one more um, taco or your um, extra satisfaction or extra utility from drinking one more cup of water, okay? So that's marginal utility. You can measure marginal utility numerically using this formula that I put here for you. Marginal utility is the change in total utility divided by change in quantity. Another way of using it is using um, basically all uh, instead of English, you can also use delta, which is this little triangle here. So delta TU divided by delta Q will give you marginal utility. You need to know the formulas. Remember for the... Um, exam, you can, of course, have the formulas ready in front of you, no problem, but just make sure you know how to um, use them. And um, I actually recorded a separate video that I show you step by step how you can calculate marginal utility. So definitely watch that video. It will be in the weekly modules for this chapter, okay? So that's the change in total utility and divided by a change in quantity. But I want to show you basically this um, little table here. Again, learn basically how to calculate uh, marginal utility using that formula. But let me just quickly show you here. Um, we typically um, have total utility, um, sorry, the marginal utility for the quantity zero blank. We do not calculate it. Um, numerically. So we leave it back because it just doesn't exist. Um, if you look at this um, little table here, this is for the number of tacos in the first column that let the one consumer um, um, uses or eats. And in the second column, we have the total utility, which is the total satisfaction from eating different units of tacos. And this is how we read these numbers. The unit basically we have here for total utility is called utils. So let's look at the first one. So when, when we don't eat any taco, obviously the total utility is zero. When you eat the first um, taco, your total utility or your total satisfaction is 10 utils. So utils is the unit we have here for, um, let me bring my marker here. So it's utils, okay, 10 utils, okay. Or if you eat the second taco, your total satisfaction is 18 utils. Um, 
economies have the, their own ways of calculating total utility, but obviously we can be skeptical about all these numbers because uh, there are just some numbers that somebody is giving to your satisfaction. Um, but just accept all these numbers for um, this chapter when we're studying, but just know that the business, that the economies actually rank different goods and services that they kind of have that they're, they're kind of in the same category. And then um, using those rankings, they come up with all these numbers for total utility. Um, obviously, if you don't like tacos, your total utility is zero all the way for any unit of taco, right? So you can be skeptical about these numbers, but just accept them because we just want to find um, those points on the budget line that maximizes your satisfaction or your utility at the end of the day. Okay, that's the goal of this chapter. And this is how you can briefly, um, I'm just going to explain it, how you can um, calculate the marginal utility. So marginal utility doesn't exist here for the um, zero unit of output. For the second one, you are going to look at these two numbers. Um, so the, the marginal utility was the change in total utility divided by change in quantity. That's your Q, okay? Number of tacos you're eating. This is your TU. So the change is 10 minus zero divided by one minus zero. So your marginal utility here is 10. For the second taco, we're going to look at these two numbers to, to calculate the change in total utility. So it's 18 minus 10 divided by two minus one, which is one. So since your, uh, your quantity is going up by one, your denominator is just one here in the formula. So your marginal utility here will be eight because 18 minus 10 divided by two minus one is eight, okay? So that's how you calculate marginal utility. Let me show you all the numbers I have here because we want to look at the shape of marginal utility and total utility. As you can see, um, for total utility, as you eat more and more tacos, your total utility is going up eventually, right? You have a very kind of sharp increase at Beginning. Since you are not as hungry as you as before, total utility is going to go up as you eat more. But at some point, your total utility when you eat fifth taco, sixth taco, it reaches the maximum. If you look at also the amount of change, let's say between the third taco and the fourth taco, fourth taco and fifth taco, your total utility is going up not as fast as before. Here you have a huge jump from zero to ten or from ten to when you eat the first and second taco. As you eat more and more, your total utility is going up very, very slowly. And at some point when you eat the seventh taco, your total utility actually starts to decline. So remember this trend because then I want to show you the shape of total utility. Let's check out marginal utility. This is what's happening to your marginal utility. As you eat more and more taco, your marginal utility, which was the additional satisfaction from eating one more taco is gonna go down. It's pretty high when you eat the first taco, but since that's your extra satisfaction and you are not as hungry as before, your marginal utility starts to decline. When your total utility, look at here, when your total utility is max right here, your marginal utility is zero. And whenever your total utility starts to decline, it's gonna go down from 30 to 28, your marginal utility becomes negative, okay? That's a very important thing to remember. So let me show you the shape of total utility and marginal utility. So your total utility goes up very fast at the beginning, and then it's going to reach the maximum and it starts to decline, right? So that's the total utility going up. And the reason that your total utility starts to decline um, and not going as fast as before, even when it's, going, it's increasing, let's say when you eat um, third taco, fourth taco, and fifth taco, is because of this decline we see in marginal utility, which is called the law of diminishing marginal utility that I kind of skipped because I just wanted to show you the graph. So this is the shape of our total utility, and you can see the relationship between these two. So... See, this is the maximum point of total utility. This is exactly where your marginal utility is zero. And look at the relationship between these two. 
And whenever your total utility right down here starts to decline, your marginal utility becomes a negative. Your marginal utility as a decreasing function, it goes down as you eat more and more. Your total utility goes up very fast at the beginning and it's still increasing at a slower rate down here, okay, before it reaches the maximum. So we call this decline in marginal utility when we consume more and more of something. Let me go back, if I can just make my mouse work. Oh, come on. Um, the law of diminishing marginal utility. So as you consume or eat more and more, your marginal utility is going to go down. That's called the law of diminishing marginal utility, okay? So now that we know what we mean by total utility and marginal utility, let's figure out those points on the budget line that we want to basically find. Um, because remember that the budget line shows basically how many, that was the budget line, right? From chapter one, this is the budget line. Let's say we have our product A here and we have our product B here and we have different points on the budget line, right? That show different combinations of A and B that we can afford using our limited income, right? With given prices. And now we want to see which one of these points we're gonna pick as a consumer. Because all these points are attainable, but at the end of the day, we're going to pick one of these points. And remember that you will pick a point on your budget line that maximizes your satisfaction, maximizes your utility. To find that a specific point on the budget line, so this is our BL from chapter one, BL budget line. If you don't remember budget line, definitely review chapter one. We need to follow a simple, basically, um, rule we have here. Let me clean everything up and move on to the next one, which is called consumer equilibrium condition or um, utility maximizing rule, okay? So utility maximizing rule or consumer equilibrium condition. So we want, again, our goal here is to find a point on the budget line that gives you maximize, maximum satisfaction from your consumption, okay? With the limited budget that you have with the given prices. So first of all, you are going to allocate your budget among different goods and services that you want to consume. As we discussed in chapter one, you know the prices. The next step to find that specific point on your budget line that gives you maximum satisfaction for you is to calculate the marginal utility for all the goods and services that you consume. Okay, you have the prices of these goods and services that you consume. So if you divide the marginal utility of, let's say, Apple by the price of Apple, do the same thing for oranges, divide marginal utility of oranges and divide it by the price of oranges and then equalize this marginal utility per dollar of all the goods and services that you consume you can have your, um, you can find your point at the budget line that maximizes your satisfaction, okay? So um, you should basically find the marginal utility per dollar or price of all the goods and services that you consume. So this could be for Apple, A, so you divide marginal utility of Apple by the price of Apple, you have to equalize it, let's say with marginal utility of orange divided by the price of orange, right? There are so many goods and services that we consume, right? So you should also equalize this ratio with marginal utility of, let's say, education divided by price of education, okay? And so many other goods and services that you consume. So you can expand this formula. So if you basically um, calculate marginal utility of, uh, mar marginal utility per dollar of all the goods and services that you consume and you equalize them, then you are able to find that um, 
point and the budget line that maximizes your utility, then you are able to maximize your utility, okay? And I have a little formula here. You can think about, of course, the expanded form of this formula. So that's the marginal utility of product A divided by the price of A. It should be equal to marginal utility of price, product B divided by the price. But again, remember that we, in reality, we use more than two products. We're just going to keep it simple here for our lectures, for our course purposes. But you can definitely expand this formula, okay? Because in real life, we um, definitely consume more than two products, okay? So this is a consumer equilibrium or or the utility maximizing rule, all right? And these are the steps that I was talking about. And um, these are the steps that we should take when we are talking about utility maximizing the rule. Um, for the exam purposes, of course, we always think about exam, we always think about assignments. Um, I'm not gonna ask you to basically calculate marginal utility for, for this type, for this part, okay? You need to know how to calculate marginal utility. You need to know, um, how to draw them, you know, should know the relationship between total utility and marginal utility. But for this part, for consumer equilibrium or utility maximizing rule, the only thing you need to know is that is this ratio here, what we mean by consumer equilibrium condition. Um, for the test, I will give you, for instance, the marginal utility um, of A. I will give you. Um, let's say the price of A, I will give you the marginal utility of B, and then I will ask you to calculate the price of B, which is literally just algebra. There is no economic kind of thing you're going to do, except remembering this formula. Or I might switch things around and um, give you the prices, give you the marginal utility of, let's say, product B, and then ask you to calculate the marginal utility of a okay so just playing around with this formula but you just need to know the concept and how we maximize uh, the utility here okay um that's the only kind of application of this formula for our class okay so that's pretty much it for this chapter as you can see um, i kept this chapter kind of short and as i said this is the only chapter that we talk about utility uh, which is related to consumers uh, we're going to skip chapter eight um, but then later on or actually um, we're not going to skip it it's just like a study kind of thing for you but there won't be any question from chapter eight so i'm not gonna go over the notes and everything it's just for you to read it's just a reading chapter but starting basically from chapter nine um we are just focused on production and sorry for the background somebody opened the door um that's pretty much it for this chapter I hope that you find it helpful. Take care, guys. Till next time.